Hey, this is Grant. I'm here with my Volca keys and my Volca sample. And I want to talk about a couple of different glitches that I find interesting uh, and can also be used musically. start with um, why I was even thinking about glitches on Volcas. I follow the Disquiet Junto. I don't know if it's pronounced Disquiet or Disquiet. Disquiet? I'm not sure. But it's a cool group um, and they have kind of artistic challenges. A recent one, number 374, they had this prompt that said, what happens when you glitch something that's been glitched? Um, so I started thinking, well, that's an interesting prompt. What are some glitches that I have in my own hardware because I'm, I'm more interested in hardware than software. And what are some that could be used musically? Um, the first one I thought of was the Volca Keys hum at 20 kilohertz because I run into it all the time. Every time I'm recording a song with the Volca Keys, I end up having to address uh, this, this hum that's uh, on the synth. And then um, I thought, well, that's, that's, something i've never really listened to before i've never tried to use it in music so uh yeah we'll see how it goes the other glitch um to use i was thinking okay if i record this hum try to use it somehow well i could play that back through the volca sample so there's a volca sample glitch i found out about recently that i hadn't tried yet and that's the infinite looping glitch so um what i ended up doing is i combined the hum with the infinite loop to create some nice drones and i use those in a song um We'll step through what exactly I did with the hum to get that into something audible. Um, and then I'll show you how to do that loop glitch yourself. Uh, and then finally at the end, I'll play through uh, something musical that uses that drone. So to start off with, we've got the Volca Keys hum. Um, I've got this, actually it's, it's going right now. It's pretty quiet. The reason I call it a hum is because it's just very steady. And the reason I call it a glitch is because it's like not actually a big deal. It's just a little bit inconvenient. Um, so if you look at the spectrum analyzer I've got pulled up right now, this is the um, Volca keys with not playing any melody. There's some noise happening, but you know, the level of the noise is so low, uh, it doesn't really bother me. But on the right side of the spectrum analyzer, you have this huge spike and it's at about 20 kilohertz. Um, I can't hear that. I wonder sometimes if my dogs can hear it. I can't hear it. I don't know if anybody can hear 20 kilohertz. But I mix while looking at a spectrum analyzer and that spike always annoys me. So every single time I have a song that uses the Volca keys, I'll put a, like a surgical EQ on there to just really drop that uh, 20 kilohertz until it's kind of in line with the rest of the song. Not a big deal. Um, Honestly, if you're not looking at a spectrum analyzer while mixing, you would probably never even know that was there. But I thought I would really like to know what that hum sounds like. So how do you take something at a really high frequency and bring it down to a level that you can actually hear? Well, you lower the pitch. I'm using Reaper. I've got a whole bunch of instances of this plugin um, on the channel where I'm recording the keys and it's called Pitch and Octave Down you can probably guess what this plugin does. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn up the Volca keys a little bit just so that we can hear that hum when it does come in. And I'm just gonna lower it one octave at a time um, so you can hear it. So you can hear it now, right? That's super annoying, isn't it? Let's make that a little lower. Okay, this is really high pitched. There we go. These last two actually sound like maybe a noise you would want a synthesizer to make, so that's good. Yeah, let's turn this one up a little bit. This is the pitch I actually ended up using um, in this song that I'll play at the end of this video. It's nice. It has fundamental frequencies around like 500, so that's kind of where you would want a lead voice to be. I like that. Um, just for kicks, let's drop it a couple more octaves and see how that sounds. It's like It's like a cool growl. I like that one. This just sounds like something is broken. I don't like this. Okay, so this is the pitch that I ended up using. Um, real quick, let's see if we can tell what pitch this actually is. So 
um, just from looking at the spectrum analyzer, it kind of looks like you've got two notes here with fundamental frequencies uh, between 500 hertz and one kilohertz. And then I, th I guess you would call these harmonics above here. Um, I'm not sure if they're actually harmonics. Uh, I really don't know what causes this signal. There could just be some additional spikes that have nothing to do with the fundamental or what I'm calling the fundamental. I don't know. But if I want to find out what note this is, I can use a tuner plugin. So here's uh, a Reaper tuner plugin. If I turn this on, it's going to try and figure out what note we're at. So um, it says we're at a little bit below a D sharp. That's flickering a little bit. But if I cut this window size down, you'll see really what it's doing is uh, it's, it's bouncing between a bunch of notes. Uh, at least that's what I think it's doing. So yeah, fundamental is like 690 hertz-ish. So um, we can auto-tune this. Uh, auto-tune is probably not the right word to use here, but we can try and pitch correct this to where it's, it's a real note. So if we click that, see how that sounds. So it's kind of rounding this up to uh, where it looks like it's an F. So I ended up not using the pitch corrected version of this in the song. I kind of like how it sounds coming straight out of the synth. Um, I'll turn this on and off so you can hear the difference. So here's the pitch corrected. There's non pitch corrected. There's pitch corrected. So yeah, it's a, let me just play an F along with it and see. Oh wait, I can't play a, a key along with it because I've got this lowered by one, two, three, four, five octaves. Um, yeah, so here's what it sounds like when you actually press a key with all these octave lowering plugins on. Yeah, that's great, huh? Everybody likes this noise. Okay, so no, we don't actually like that noise. I want that noise. Um, I also put on just a high pass filter uh, all I did was I kind of swept it up until I could hear an impact. Uh, basically, what I'm trying to do is take all of that kind of noise that I don't care about below those fundamental frequencies uh, and just filter it out. Um, what I'm doing at this point is I'm trying to prepare to load it into a sampler to use in a song. At this point, uh, I'm going to skip the process of actually recording that drone um, and then loading it into the Volca sample. Um, but what I did is um, I recorded it, uh, maybe a two-second clip, normalized it, um, exported the normalized file, and then I used Voser to load that file onto the Volca sample. Um, and I just made a new Volca sample library that only has that one noise. It's like a one-second loop of what you were just listening to. Um, again, I'm not going to show all those steps, but if you have any questions about how to do that, I'd definitely leave a comment, um, and I'm happy to explain that stuff. We're done with the keys now. We recorded our hum, lowered down to where human ears can hear it. So I'm going to turn that off and kind of swap it out for the sample. Our Volca sample is hooked up now. The only thing loaded onto this, the only sample that's loaded onto the Volca sample right now is just this. It's that drone we made that was lowered a bunch of octaves out of the Volca keys. That's it. So we're going to have to get creative to actually do something musical with this one sample. Let's talk about the infinite loop glitch. Um, in order to demonstrate that, the first thing I want to do is take this sample and I'm going to mess with the start and end points to make this into something that loops nicely. So we're going to turn the loop on off switch on. So this does loop. We're going to turn the decay all the way up so we get a nice long, long loop. Um, let's see how this sounds without any additional processing. Okay, so there's a clear kind of an envelope at the beginning of this sample. Um, I think that has to do with how I exported it from Reaper, so my bad, but that's okay. We can just shift the start point forward. So let's see if it loops better with the start point moved up a little bit.
Okay. I like that. That sounds pretty good. So I think the start and end points are uh, pretty well set there. Um, now we just got to make this thing loop forever. In order to do that, um, okay, here's here's the infinite loop glitch. Here's how you do it. Um, this can be while sequences are playing or whatever. You just press trigger the sample. And then you turn the decay knob down and then back up really fast. And that's it. When you turn that decay knob back up, um, whatever level that loop is still at, it's just going to stay there. So for example, if I, let's get this thing to stop. Okay. If I press the button, wait until the sample's pretty quiet, turn it down, turn it back up. It's still going at this really quiet level. It's just going to stay here until I hit mute, re-trigger the sample. Um, it's just going to stay right where it is right now. So let's try and get that louder. In order to get it louder, I'm just going to hit um, trigger the sample by just pressing that button. And then I'm going to turn the decay knob down and up again as fast as I can. So now it's nice and loud, and it's not stopping. So that's something. Um, let's mess with the sample a little bit more, because I mentioned earlier I wanted it to be a drone, right? Uh, this is very. This is a very present sound. It's kind of in your face. I don't want that. So we're going to we're going to use a low pass filter. We're going to mess with the speed so that it plays at a lower pitch. That's kind of cool. The, the loop makes it sound like it's pulsating. I like that. You can also um, automate parameters here. So, and this is the cool part about the infinite loop. Um, I can do whatever I want on the sequencer right now. And this loop is just going to keep playing. I loaded up a blank um, memory slot just for this video. So let's mess around with it a little bit. I'm going to turn on motion sequence. And then to keep this interesting, um, I'll start by recording some movement on the pan. Well, this is really goofy, but the point is, um, it's an infinite loop, so it's not re-triggering anything. This sample has been going the entire time uh, we've been recording since I first turned that decay knob down and back up. If I stop the playback, um, it'll just continue that um, loop where we left off. So yeah, I can record a whole bunch of movement all over the panel. Whenever I hit play, it's all there. Whenever I stop it, it just stops where it is. So I 
That's pretty cool, right? I'm gonna stop this because it's hurting my head. We're just gonna. As you can see, you can kind of do some sequencer tricks to really mix things up. Um, it's really hard to control. So one reason I decided to go with the drone for this is it sits farther back in the mix. You kind of want it to change over time just so that it doesn't get too stale. Um, but because it's not a lead, because it's like sitting in the background, you don't have to have complete control over it. Um, the, the instrument can be doing some funny things and, and it still sounds cool in the track. So that was just one of the ways you can use an infinite loop. Let me show you the actual... Um, we're going to switch over to the memory slot that I used in the jam, which I'll play for you here pretty shortly. And I'll show you some examples of um, just the different sounds I made with that um, Volca keys grab. So the first thing I did actually is, is uh, remember I said earlier, I, I didn't use any pitch correction on this. It's not playing a real note. Um, but I thought, well, it could be fun if I do like a scale, uh, and then I pick, you know, the notes in a scale or what would normally be the intervals between the notes in a Dorian scale. Um, but instead of starting with like the note C, I just start with this weird noise that came out of the Volca keys. It sounded okay. Um, here's what it sounded like. So you can you can kind of make a melody out of the Volca keys, but again, like that's not a real note. None of these are none of these are real notes. If you have a, a well tuned piano, you can't play along with them. So I think that's interesting, um, but it's it's also a little bit hard to use in a song. I didn't really use it. Um, I made some percussive sounds as well. So there's kind of a, I don't know what this is, like a ride maybe? Yeah, like a ride cymbal. Here's a really low drone. Um, I think it sounds like a gong maybe. This one I did use in the live jam a lot because it I just think this sounds really cool sitting behind a track. Um, I added some spring reverb to it. In fact, I'll just do that now on the mixer so you can hear what that sounds like. I think it was string. No, you know what? Yeah, I added some plate reverb to it. So that sounds like this. So it sounds like this with some reverb behind it. Um, to me, that's a really cool drone. I, I really am happy with how that drone sounds. Um, I made another drone that's at a higher pitch. This one, um, you can really hear the looping envelope a little bit more. To me, it kind of sounds like someone ringing a bell over and over again. Here are those two drones playing together, um, and I do have that plate reverb coming out of my mixer as well. Um, I, I just think this is a really cool sounding drone. Um, because the Volca sample, it, okay, here's the hard part. How do I stop this from playing? <laughs> um, you can, you can, whoops. You can even load a different sequence. It'll still just keep on playing that loop once you've got it started. Um, what I've done is, if I know I want to fade it out, I'll just re-trigger the sample. And when you re-trigger the sample, it'll just grab the um, value on the decay knob at that instant, and it'll kind of ring itself out. So let's do that. samples are going to ring out now. Um, I really like that because these are kind of lo-fi samples, right? Like we took really noisy samples. We then, um, I guess we lowered the bit rate. I, I might be using the wrong term there, but we compressed the files to where they could be loaded onto the vocal sample and that gives them a little bit more grit. And then uh, I've also used the isolators on here. Yeah, to emphasize the tremble. That brings out that grit even more. Um, I think all that combines to make a really cool sounding drone. And I plan on continuing to use the Volca sample for drones now that I know I can do this. Uh, in fact, I'm excited to just grab some other samples that aren't a buzzing noise from the Volca keys uh, and make drones out of those. It, it's cool. I've never thought of the Volca sample as a drone machine before, but it's actually pretty good at that. Um, okay, so we went through the little scale. Uh, we went through the drones. What else do I have on here? 
Oh yeah, and I made this little chirp too. This is like a percussive noise. That sounds okay. Let's take that reverb off. So here's the kind of percussion sequence that I made out of these noises. It's like swingy. It's kind of too swingy. Let's take some of that off. So yeah, it's got kind of a groove to it. Um, so these are just the three percussive noises that we made from that little buzz. I'm going to add the drones on top of this. It's a little bit chaotic, but I like it. So yeah, uh, everything that's playing right now uh, comes from the Volca Keys buzz, lowered down by, I think, five octaves, and fed through the Volca sample. That's it. You've got two infinite loops made out of a buzzing noise that comes out of the Volca Keys when you're not playing it. Um, it's a cool sounding drone. I really like how this drum sounds. One thing I forgot to mention earlier about the Volca Keys glitch, um, it's a common one. I don't know if it's in every single Volca Keys. Um, I do know it's always in mine. Um, it's there whether you have batteries or power cord um, and it's there regardless of the settings of any knobs or if you're playing any keys. I mentioned that because uh, I, I see people say a lot that um, using a power cord, especially using a splitter power cord, can cause noise on the keys. Um, in the case of the specific noise that we're using in today's video, um, that's there whether I'm using a power cord or battery. So I promise you guys that noise that we sampled is not just hum coming from the power cord. So we've been through how to make these two glitches, how to combine them to do something musical. Um, again, if at any point I was doing something and you're like, wait, how did you do that? Um, just leave a comment. Um, I'll, I'll try and explain the details. I, I didn't want to step through the entire process or else this would be like a way too long video. Um, but I'm always happy to nerd out about this stuff to people. So just ask. Um, so here's a jam. Um, I made kind of an acid sounding track out of this because when I had the drones done, um, and wanted to make a track out of it, it was March 3rd, 303 day. So I'm like, okay, I don't have a 303, but I do have a Volca bass and that does a decent imitation of a 303. So enjoy some acid. Um, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, and, uh, yeah, enjoy the jam. Enjoy the jam.